Hi, this is Lara from astrolada.com with your October 2019 videos and I have great news for you. The astrological cosmic weather will be sunny. It will be like a breath of fresh air. All the planets are moving forward, which means that we can move ahead with our lives and goals and plans. We'll be very productive as well. We'll be very initiative because the Libra season is season of action. And because there are no retrograde planets this month, it means that things go according to our expectations. We don't get frustrated because of delays, because of obstacles. We don't have to think of plan B and C, so move ahead with confidence and positivity the star will support you and even some of you might have difficult personal transits because everyone has a horoscope that no one else in the world has you know <clears throat> and you can check what your personal transits will be like from my birth chart from my uh, birth transit calendar basically which is um, for free and here you can see how it looks from astrolada.com and you can see all those transits are specifically for me. No one else in the world has them at the same time with me. And if you happen to see a difficult transit here, they have explanations, for example, like this one, you know, and it's more complex, it's more difficult. Uh, still don't worry because overall the astrological weather that I'm talking about in those videos will be so positive that it will basically the outer circumstances will support you, will help you overcome whatever difficulty it is in your personal horoscope. And um, this is a season of love and relationships as well in October. It will be very much focused on relationships, on others, on bonding with others, because this is Libra season after all. And because of that, me and Natalia are making a webinar, two-part webinar in two days on love and sex. Natalia will focus on the practical side, on how to bond sexually with the different signs. I will focus on the love aspect of it. It's for beginners or advanced people. I'll give you my deep insights. What does each sign want? Uh, what does each sign love? How to be loved? The love languages of the different signs and the positions that show those love languages. So do join us at, towards the end of October sometime. And also, there's still open places for Bali with me and Natalia. Very, very boutique uh, uh, retreat. Now it's open also for men. It's um, webinar to focus on giving birth to your goddess inner goddess and god or inner god and i'll work specifically with each person on their personal horoscope and natalia will work individually with each person and each woman or man on uh, their issues so that's very tailor-made all right so let's dig into the october horoscopes Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising, October 2019. This month will be very active for you. Let's see where the action is happening. The two male planets of activity, of uh, initiative, of willpower and drive and ambition, the Sun and Mars, will be in your 11th house, Sagittarius. You see, this is Sagittarius, the 11th house from there is where the Sun and Mars are together this month activating. And it's rare that the two driven planets, Sun and Mars, will be together in the same sign. Uh, and that's the 11th house is social activity. So I see that a lot of Sagittarius will be out there in the public eye. They'll be getting involved with the groups of people, whether online or directly live. And some of you, it might be like a church activity that you're doing. Others might be a community activity that you're doing. The others might be uh, that you're proactively searching, uh, trying to gain access to some select group of people, maybe a club of some sort, organization. And you're going to be successful because Sun and Mars are the king and it's general. The king has an idea, the general goes and wins the war and uh, applies that idea. So if you want to uh, be uh, part of any group, now this month you can achieve it by proactively going after that and winning and getting it. Sorry for the, the green <laughs> becoming transparent. Uh, also the 11th house is the house of friends. Some of you can notice themselves that you're way more active, your friends are more active, they invite you to more places, for example, to do activities together, uh, that you're uh, uh, participating and actively pursuing certain conferences where lots of people, like-minded people get together or that you're uh, actively pursuing to be some kind of on some committee, 
uh, or something to do with uh, presidential elections or something to do with political elections, with social activity and um, uh, activity that contributes to the whole society basically of some sort. Also, if you're in any career or business that involves getting together with lots of people, organizing group activities, this will be extremely active month where you'll get a lot of things done. Uh, in a proactive way, you know, you're not just going to sit around there and these things will happen. You will have the motivation to do it. Um, on another level, it, it is friendship and you can notice that friends around you are a bit more masculine in nature, Mars, Sun, that you're uh, getting involved with more male people in your environment, that you're doing activities with such people, more ambitious, more driven people, and they become your fuel as well for drive and ambition to achieve your goals. The 11th house is also the house of gains and earnings. So some of you will proactively be pursuing gains and earnings, for example, a bonus of some sort, or recognition from society, or some kind of a reward that you're proactively working hard for. Others will be trying to increase their revenues, to be increasing their gains, and very likely you'll be successful, but with your own willpower. You have to make the efforts, and you have to do the initiatives there, and you can have new ideas. The sun is the most intelligent planet. When it's in the 11th house, you have the ideas, New ideas come to you in regards for more gains, for more earnings, for more um, to how to fulfill your uh, dreams and wishes, some long-term goal that you are basically, it's, it's like a ideal for you that you wanted. Well, now you're going to go after it. You're not going to just sit around and say, uh, this is going to happen for me. And uh, also though, because it's friends uh, and social connections, Sun and Mars can be a little bit more of a dominating planet. And uh, you can notice that your people around you in your group or in your friends or in your social group, you know, that they're being a bit more pushy, maybe a bit more aggressive. So there can be some clashes with friends of some sort, especially towards the end of the month, uh, more people will feel it because Saturn and Mars are making a hard aspect together. So you can clash with, uh, because of, you know, because of certain misunderstandings with people, of some friends of yours can be having problems. Uh, uh, there can be some clash because of uh, <clears throat> uh, how your values, because Saturn in the second house of your values is clashing with Mars in the 11th house, how your values are clashing with those of your friends, uh, or there can be some more spending, for example, that happens on social activities, because Saturn is in the second house. And because of some social or business event or goal of yours, there can be a bit more complication towards the end of the month for about a week. Uh, maybe some spendings have to, you have to spend a bit more for such um, get togethers or um, uh, uh, activities that involve business, for example. Uh, and the 11th house is very business oriented house. People that are in their own business, very, very productive month. Because Sun and Mars go and just want to make things happen. The 11th house is large audiences, big groups of people. So these people will proactively pursue more audience, more fans, um, how to reach there, uh, how to expand there uh, and make a breakthrough in uh, the people they reach as well. But definitely, if you're in business, if you are dealing with people, that's a very positive and very driven and ambitious month. Uh, then we have two beautiful planets, Venus and Mercury, in your 12th house. Wherever Venus and Mercury go, they guarantee that this area of your life will happen smoothly and pleasantly, that more joy comes to your life from there. And the 12th house is dealings with foreign countries, for example, and faraway people. So if you have any such dealings, They'll go well, they'll be supportive, There's, there can be benefit coming from there. Even if you have some investments abroad, um, import, export, or with people from foreign countries, um, these business deals or communications should go quite smoothly and well as well. Uh, if you go on a holiday abroad, this can be a good time for it. First, you'll be very proactive to make new friends, Mars and Sun. They'll be quite driven, ambitious as well. And second, you'll you derive a lot of pleasure from being in a faraway country. Things will go smoothly there. 
uh, 12th house is also the house of sleep. So if you've been having some problems with sleep, Mercury and Venus can promise you this month that there'll be improvement there. Maybe the conditions, um, maybe you'll be able to get more sleep or even have uh, better dreams rather than nightmares of any sort. 12th house is also the house of spirituality. So you can derive a lot, and Mercury and Venus in a combination, according to the ancient karmatic text, a very spiritual combination. So you can have, it can be a powerful trigger for some spiritual experiences for some of them that feed the soul, that uh, create a stronger bond to God, maybe by communicating with God through prayer, Mercury is to communicate, you know, uh, and by reading spiritual texts as well, spiritual um, exercises of any sort. Also, you'd feel naturally more inclined to be generous towards others. The 12th house is the house of charity and good deeds that we do to return to others for good deeds that were done to us in past lifetimes. And you can notice that your compassion increases, you're more you know, willing to give, to help others in need, especially women and children, Venus is women, or Jewish children or younger people. Uh, uh, you can do some... Uh, altruistic deed towards such groups, and especially since uh, Mars and Sun in your 11th house, another house that wants to help society on the whole, and the 12th house is very um, compassionate. Also, it can be that some secret support comes to you. The 12th house is also uh, our, our guardian angels, you know, that take care of us, our uh, good actions that we've done in the past. So now as a result, it can be returned to us by sources that we did not expect, by people or some area or something that we did not expect that someone helps us, gives us secret support. It might be that you're able to connect with your angels, with your guardian angels, with your ancestors that are benevolent towards you, that love, that want to help you and receive messages from them, some communication, Mercury, some loving messages from departed people, Venus and Mercury together in the 12th house. Also, people that are, in, that are using the imagination, musicians, artists, that have to be isolated and create something in isolation, which is again the 12th house, and connect to the invisible realms and bring down inspiration, they'll notice themselves that they're, they're like an open vessel now that is happening without them having to strain themselves. They're receiving like insights, spiritual insights or uh, artistic insights. Venus and Mercury is not only spiritual, it's very creative and artistic. It's very artistic. Mercury is skill, communication, information. Venus is harmonious, beautiful. Um, you know, so you can receive such kind of messages or information or uh, inspirations from the invisible world, whether you're a um, designer or, or musician or whatever. Uh, and uh, 12 House is the house of research also. It can indicate that you're having some very enjoyable moments studying, researching something more deeper. Might be science, might be something more mystical or occult or spiritual. And you're getting deeper, understanding easier than normal, that you're really enjoying exploring the subconscious, reading books on psychology, reading books on life after death, reading books on spirituality. Um, working with a psychologist, it can feel very smooth right now as well. If you're a psychic or a healer, someone in the spiritual fields, this month will should bring very good things. And I also think even material resources to you uh, and rewards, or that you're very much in touch with those invisible um, helpers above, and you're able to help um, kind of unconditionally people around you. Um, but also the 12th house, the house of losses and expenses. So there is a possibility that you're spending a bit more on Venusian or mercurial things, on learning, uh, for example, that you're spending on social events and because uh, Mercury and Venus are very social as well, that you're spending more on spiritual, on things that you consider beautiful, like clothes, but these are not, um, you know, it's just, you're doing it because you're enjoying it and you want to do that. But there's some extra expenses that can happen sometimes. Also, the 12th house is a hidden house. Mercury and Venus are planets of communication and relationships. So there can be certain hidden and set things, not in a malevolent way, maybe like a private relationship that you're not officially announcing to someone or um, some private communication that's happening with you, which is not fully manifest. Maybe it's just online or something like that. It's, uh, it's, it's not kind of 
Sekhir. But the Twelve House is also the house of retreat and uh, the house of um, anything to do with spas, with uh, places of rest, so hotels as well is a Twelve House. So if you're visiting any hotels or working in hotels or retreats, it can be a good time to go to a spa. It can trigger that to rest, to heal your soul as well to do something so, and, and to really enjoy spending time alone. It's almost like from this busy social activity that's happening here, Mars and Sun, you're exerting a lot for gains, for business, for networking, connecting, uh, social activity. But at the same time, you feel most warm and cozy and relaxed when you're in the privacy, isolated alone in the privacy of your bedroom with a book, reading a spiritual book. And that's where you, how you escape reality or having some private conversation with someone dear, um, you know. And in, in extreme cases, it can mean like a secret relationship or communication that's happening with someone. But it's nothing stressful or negative there. Then we have Jupiter continues to move forward. It has only two months in your sign, Sagittarius. And which Sagittarius, and it's moving forward, which means you can initiate new beginnings, powerful, um, powerful opportunities can come to you. You can feel luckier, generally, as Sagittarius, all of you, sorry. Uh, so Sagittarius, lucky month for you. I'm telling you, and, and Jupiter is very strong. It has no negative aspects this month. So you move forward with opportunities opening to you if it's your sun there, especially if it's in the following degrees from around 17 to 24 degrees in Sagittarius, which means if you're born from around the 10th to around the 17th of December, this month is your month. This month you are, or, or if you have your sun, moon, or ascendant basically in those degrees um, from 17 to 23 degrees, so you're born, it means if it's the sun from the 10th to the 17th of December. Wow, this month you're the favorite child of the universe. You're the pampered one because Jupiter is God's divine grace. It's where we receive um, the rewards. It's where we, new opportunities come to us. The grace of God is poured out on us. So if it's your sun there, it means that something with career, with fulfilling your goals, something good can come to you through a male figure, through a husband, through a father, or in regards to your business to fulfill your goals in life. You can have more confidence, more optimism. Um, you can feel just better overall and be at the right place at the right time. Something can appear that gives purpose and meaning for your life for 12 years at least ahead, that makes your life purposeful and connected in the flow of the universe that helps you find your dharma. Dharma is the path that makes you happiest, that your soul wants to follow, to fulfill the good deeds. Um, and growth, expansion through those things, opportunities for travel can appear, for study, for learning. If it's your moon in those degrees, 70 to 24, this is oh, very good news for matters concerning family, home life, uh, uh, emotional relationships and bonding, feeling happier. You can move to a good place, expand your home, have an opportunity to something with your personal life to go better as well, or with your mom and women generally in your life, and emotional relationships. If it's your ascendant, everything in your life, like a new beginning there, um, a new cycle, start of a 12 year cycle, the things that come to you as ideas, as inspirations, as beliefs are going to be helpful for you for many years ahead. And again, if you want anything to do, I believe that this month is one of the best for you, Sagittarius, to do that. While Jupiter is still in your sign, all the planets are moving direct, new beginnings, which means explore new territories, things go according to plan. And yeah, pretty good, <laughs> pretty good outlook for Sagittarius. Of course, if you're having your own personal transits that are a bit harder, because uh, a lot of Sagittarius, some people might have planets in Capricorn or Saturn or so whatever, then um, the overall, you can check those transits on the personal transit calendar that I have uh, that is specific only for you. No one else in the world has it. And so you can be prepared for that. But otherwise, all the planets are conspiring to help you. Uh, and I would love to see you with me and Natalia on October webinar, two-day webinar on love and relationships and sex. I'm talking the astrological side of relationships and the love languages of the science. You don't need to know any astrology. 
and Natalia is talking the sixth language <laughs> of the 12 signs and practical part of the webinar. And also, if you want just to join us in Bali, <laughs> be proactive, Mars and Sun in your 11th house, organize something, get together with like-minded people uh, to learn and grow. Uh, we have six or seven more places left. Um, and these are the only place where I do personal readings, seven, four days nonstop with your chart, exploring, giving solutions to life problems, direction to your life, vision for your life, remedies. And Natalia will do to rework you on the psychological level. So thank you so much and enjoy this beautiful month.